Hi, welcome back to the channel. So last week we created this, which is loosely based on an Azure patch. So for those who didn't watch that video, it's essentially using the sequencer and then just one step, but then I'm randomizing various parameters here every time the note re-triggers every 16th. But this week I want to take it a bit darker and use more of these functions in this awesome sequencer. So first up, let's go to our patch itself. Let's try and make this a bit darker as a source, and then we'll come back to the sequencer. Let's use a sign. Let's turn it all the way down. Let's add a bit of FM. Maybe exponential. Let's turn the pitch of the modulator down. We can make that, say, a triangle. I think a triangle works best. Bit of wave folding. Obviously it's clipping, so watch out for that. So now in context with the kick and bass, we have this. It's only good as a basis, but now we need to go and use some of these sequencer functions. Let's drag it over to, let's say, four bars for now. The track is in D sharp minor, so let's turn these up to D sharp. Then ensure that the note that we are playing is on C, because it's in reference to a bass note of C. So now every note that we play back, it will be in D sharp minor. The trigger probability on these steps is quite low, so let's turn this back up to around 50%. Now where the fun comes in is on the pitch lane. If we now turn the randomization up, you can see that this will randomize very similarly to what we did with the other lanes. However, we are going to do in scale. So let's go natural minor here. And you can see that these are the notes that it will randomize because these are obviously in that scale. And you can do Phrygian or whatever you like. So it's really quite flexible. But let's stick with natural minor. Turn the randomization up. Let's go around 50%. So that's only quite good. Let's now take it one step further. Let's move these across to eight. Let's move them up again to 
D sharp. It's got all the velocities up, so they're in line as well. But now what we can do is, if we think that it's a bit too random and we just want to spice it up just on a few steps, we can lock a few of these. So let's lock some important ones, like the first two. Let's lock seven also, and maybe four. Now the ones that aren't locked, three, five, six, and eight, will randomize. So you can see that that brings a lot more consistency to it. Rather than having every hit randomized, it's only randomizing the ones that we didn't select or we didn't lock at the top. Now let's go even a step further than that and let's turn on polyrhythm. And now we can drag these individually. So you can see that these steps are still on eight for the pitch but then we can move each of these back independently. Slide we're not using, so that can stay on eight. It doesn't make a difference. Gate length, let's do on something like five. Uh, we can maybe, we can adjust the cutoff now, let's put it on 24. We can maybe put a allophone now on the cutoff. Let's do a sign. Turn this up. So now we have a sign modulating it in a consistent manner at one quarter, but then the random on velocity interfering with that. So it's still, it's still not completely consistent and it gives that kind of glitchy kind of feel to it now. So there we go, hours of fun to be had in this little sequencer here. It is really quite advanced once you get into it. And with this polyrhythm function, there are limitless options for moving each of these steps around and then randomizing it. Such a good feature. I wish all synths had a sequencer like this. And Pigments is very quickly becoming my favorite synth now, actually. I think the one thing that I miss from it would be a mod matrix. If it had a mod matrix, it would be pretty much perfect. I know in the middle is essentially a mod matrix, but it's not quite the same as having a list and being able to see them very, very quickly. So one final listen. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.